So can everyone still hear me? Ah, uh, yep. Yep. Excellent. So finally, it's uh, after at least, I don't know how many years, but a good uh, 10 years, I've decided to do my turn. Uh, <laughs> it's only fair. <laughs> it took me much longer. Oh, you can't hear me. <laughs> Uh, so uh, you've got the joy of a small family history. Uh, Wilhelm Solf, who was my great great grandfather, uh, and his wife and his daughter, and what they they, they got up to sort of between 1900 and uh, 1946. So if I can, how can I work this out? There we go. I'll just give you a quick rundown of the family tree. Um, so yes. Uh, then quickly talk about the Arb Arbeas that those who don't know, and go on to the famous Frau Solf tea party. The aftermath of said tea party, much like the aftermath of a Sheridan uh, club night. The imprisonments and trials re that resulted of this, and then some final, final comments. So let us start with my family tree. Here we have on your left, uh, Wilhelm Heinrich Solf, my great, great grandfather and his wife, Yo Johanna Suzanne Elizabeth Dotty. They actually had four children, uh, but there are only two of which are, uh, are important, so I shall just keep it simple. First of all, and I apologize because she's got a Samoan first name. So, Oa e Male Lagi, Raffin von Baustrom. And uh, her, her first name, she was only ever known by that. She had no Germanic or, or English derived uh, first name and it means uh, came from heaven or came down from heaven or light of heaven depending on the exact translation. You also have Wilhelm Hermann Solf, my great grandfather, who was given for the father of another Wilhelm Hermann Solf whose photo I could not find and all of my family, uh, family possessions are still in, in the UK. And that's my father back in 1992 as a young man. And then finally, we come on to the, uh, the uh, most important of the bloodline who is still with us today uh, and has inherited all of the good looks and class and dignity of the family. And who unfortunately is giving you this presentation this evening. So, Wilhelm Solf. The early years. So he was born in 1862 and was the fourth of eleven uh, of seven children. Sorry, uh, to a fairly wealthy family in Berlin, who took part uh, much in the uh, bourgeoisie uh, lifestyle of Berlin at the time. He attended a grammar school, which from which he was expelled for having a loose mouth. Uh, there's no reports of what he actually said to his teachers, um, and then eventually graduated from another school with an average performance. But during his childhood, he was fascinated by stories of the Far, far East, and in particular, the Indian subcontinent. As a result of this, he went to university uh, and did uh, Indology as a, as a degree. Uh, following uh, graduation, he worked in the library at the University of Kiel in Germany before being drafted into the Navy uh, back when the uh, Military service was obligatory. However, much like many of us, he was dismissed as unfit for duty because of his stoutness, as well as his foot ailment. The time that he was then uh, freed up because he was no longer conscripted, he uh, further learnt Urdu and Persian. Uh, following um, a college friend to London, which was seen as the centre of the research uh, in India, he described to his parents his life in London. Uh, it is true that English life is expensive and Sundays are so boring that every dog can be happy that it has fleas. But the elegance and greater inner freedom, free from many formal nonsense in our homeland, has suited me. Due to his uh, linguistic skills, uh, he was admitted to the foreign service, the German foreign service. Uh, despite having been offered a, a place at the University of Oxford. And in uh, December of uh, 1888, he was given the administration of the Secretariat at the Imperial Consulate General in Calcutta uh, under British rule. So 
January 1889 sees him traveling to India. And as early as May, his superior, the uh, Consul General Gerlich, was able to report to General Bismarck that Salford shone with discretion, tact, good language skills and conscientiousness and was suitable for uh, advancement within the um, service. However, becoming a member of the Asiatic Society and much suspicion of uh, the British, he spent a lot of time with the locals in India uh, due to his uh, mastery of the language. Uh, so he didn't progress as he would have wished. As a result, he resigned to uh, continue his studies and took a legal degree. And having followed that, he was appointed the Grand Ducal Saxon Court Assessor in Germany. I tried to look up what this actually meant, but it just meant he was a very important judge. <laughs> uh, and following that, he reported the Foreign Office to resume his service, um, whereupon, according to his own request, he came to the uh, Colonial Department. His first job, having re- uh, reassigned uh, to the Colonial Department of the Foreign Office was in East Africa. And he was entrusted with the task of drafting a reform for the taxation of the local, popula lo local population in German East Africa, modern day Tanzania. He was so keen to go that uh, within a, a month or so, he was on the next uh, step out to the, uh, to the colony uh, to take over the post of judge in the capital Dar es Salaam. He had a good working relationship with the governor and was thus able to exert a decisive influence on the governor who was little versed in the matters of foreign policy at this time, uh, with uh, Wilhelm Self himself stating, the governor is a passionate enemy of the English. I must use all my skill to keep him from doing any resulting nonsense. Following his successes in, uh, in Africa, uh, he received a call from the Foreign Office in, uh, in Germany to go to Samoa as German consul. He was uh, much impressed by this offer and left uh, for the South Pacific while the governor of uh, Tanzania, uh, Liebert, referred to him as a deserter because he had left. As governor of Samoa, the most urgent task was to pacify the inhabitants. The quarrelling Samoans had now come under unified foreign rule for the first time. And his maxim on this question was clear. Right from the start, I took the point of view that I learned in India, taught in Africa, and that was to interfere as little as possible with pure indigenous relationships. He was more popular as governor with the Samoans and the English inhabitants and his own compatriots. And most of the Germans in Samoa uh, orientated themselves between, towards the Pan-German Association, which saw Samoa as a settlement colony in the Reich. The spokesperson for this group, a former lieutenant, published a book called Heil Samoa, uh, which caused a, a real enthusiasm for Samoa in Germany. However, as Solf uh, pointed out, he'd only been in Samoa for two weeks total in his life. Uh, at the end of 1901, Solf went uh, on leave to Germany uh, where he was awarded the Order of the Crown by Kaiser Wilhelm II. And whilst he was there, he happened to say to his deputy, I hope I won't be infected by this rampant, rampant addiction to marriage in my life. I don't know why that quote has come up, but uh, there we go. However, in 1908, who, uh, Solf, who was already approaching the age of 50, stepped in front of the altar to marry Hannah Dotti, 25 years his junior a trend that the male members of the Soul family have followed ever since. Uh, contrary to all the uh, stereotypes of the day, the young wife did not match the image of an average woman who dedicated her life to home and hearth. Her lively temperament, she famously shot a charging bull elephant from the range of less than 20 yards. Her empathy and her understanding of art allowed her to participate fully in her husband's work from the start. And in, in August, their daughter, Laggy, uh, was born. Uh, as I said, uh, so, so uh, Emalali Laggy, the one who came from heaven. Uh, best, uh, she was known as Laggy, for, to make it simpler for everyone. <sighs> in 
In 1910, the Samoan people celebrated 10 years of membership of the German Empire. And in the meantime, uh, Friedrich von Lindquist had become the colonial state secretary. Uh, and Salford had long decided to go back to East Africa, uh, was no longer able to fulfill his wish because the new secretary was uh, very much against, uh, against uh, occupation in Africa. Thus, uh, in 1910, he returned to Germany uh, and the secretary, the colonial, colonial state, state secretary, excuse me, uh, von Lindquist, actually had to resign in protest against compensation that Germany received after the end of the second Moroccan crisis. His successor, funny enough, happened to be the governor of Samoa. So going from the most remote German colony uh, in existence, he'd moved to management of the entire German colonial administration. Between, uh, uh, sorry, Sulf lobbied for a negotiated peace settlement in 1917. I do skip quite quickly because there's a, a lot of time to cover in, uh, not a lot of time, so to speak. Uh, a peace settlement from 1917 and 18, and he opposed the implementation of unrestricted submarine warfare uh, with the onset of World War I, policy that eventually contributed to the entry of the United States uh, into the war. And with the defeat of Germany imminent and the likelihood of a revolution growing in Germany, he was appointed as what turned out to be the last of the imperial foreign ministers. In this capacity, he undertook the negotiations for the armistice that took effect on the 11th of November, 1918. He resigned his post, uh, of course, following uh, the surrender of Germany uh, in December 1918. Uh, and following that, later life, yes. Following the Versailles Treaty, sorry, uh, this paved the way for the resumption of diplomatic relations, including that between Germany and Japan. He was appointed the charge d'affaires, or the um, German ambassador, in Tokyo by Reich President Ebert, and after his arrival in August, was appointed ambassador, full ambassador, in uh, December. Despite the interruption of the First World War, the tradi tra traditionally close German-Japanese uh, relationship had not suffered, with captured German soldiers being treated well uh, in POW camps, and most Germans living in Japan being allowed to keep their homes. The only th uh, thing that was a bit more uh, complicated as a diplomatic re relation was that uh, Sof had to explain the change conditions in Germany to the Germans in Japan, <laughs> whilst at the same time he had to em em empathize with Japan to arouse confidence in the new German government and also to seek cooperation with other diplomatic missions. By this point, uh, he'd reached the age limit for, for, for the Foreign Service and was accrued in 1928. Japan, in fact, asked the German government to keep him past, uh, at his post until the end of the year so that he can, could convey the di diplomat's congratulations to the emperor as uh, a doyen of the diplomatic corps following uh, coronation cel celebrations in uh, Japan. Thus, at the end of 1928, Sulf returned to Germany. In 1929, he became president of the Japan Institute in Berlin. And during his tenure, the institute focused primarily on Buddhist research but he also promoted research into the history of Japan and presented modern Japanese uh, literature. 1930, the Theological Faculty of the University of Göttingen awarded him a doctorate. And during this time, he succeeded in organizing an extensive exhibition of works by living Japanese painters at the Prussian Academy of Arts in Berlin. Uh, and then sadly he passed away on the 6th of February, 1936, aged 73. So that gives you the background uh, of, of where his family and the di diplomatic service has come from. So we're, we're moving on uh, through time to talk about the advert. Uh, I imagine plenty of people here know a lot about it, but so I'll give a very brief overview. The Abwehr was the German military intelligence service for the Reichswehr and the Wehrmacht from 1920 to 1945. Though the Treaty of Versailles totally prohibited the Germans from establishing an intelligence organization of their own, they formed an espionage group in 1920 within the Ministry of Defense, calling it the Abwehr. The initial purpose of the Abwehr was to, to was defense against foreign espionage. 
Under General Kurt von Schle Schleicher, the individual military services intelligence units were combined. And in 1929, centralized under his Ministry of Defense. Each adverse station throughout Germany was based on army districts and more offices were opened in amenable neutral countries and in the occupied territories as the Greater Reich expanded. The Ministry of Defence was renamed the Ministry of War in 1935 and then replaced by Adolf Hitler altogether. Uh, this was classed as part of the Führer's personal working staff from June 1938 uh, with the... The Adver falling under command of Vice Admiral Wilhelm Canaris. Under Canaris, the Adver expanded and proved to be efficient during the early years of the war. Its most notable successes, successes was, were uh, Operation Nord Bolt, which was an operation against the Dutch underground network, which at the time was supported by the SOE uh, during the phone, time known as the Phony War. They collected information on Denmark and Norway, shipping shipping in and out of uh, Danish and Norwegian ports was placed under observation and over 150,000 tons of shipping was destroyed as a result. Agents in Norway and Denmark successfully penetrated their military uh, thoroughly enough to determine the disposition and strength of land forces in both countries. Uh, and deep cover operatives kept the German forces, particularly the Luftwaffe, intimately informed during the invasion of Norway. However, just how committed to, the, to German victory were typical members of the Abwehr, and this is difficult to assess, but if its leadership tells a story, it's not one of conviction. For instance, during March 1942, when many Germans still had confidence in their Führer and their army, Canaris saw things differently and told General From that there was no way Germany could win the war. Uh, furthermore, the Abwehr was impaired by agents who aided the Allies in whatever the covert means were necessary. Canaris personally gave false information that discouraged Hitler from invading Switzerland. He also persuaded, uh, persuaded Francisco Franco not to allow German forces to pass through Spain in order to invade Gibraltar. And most historians agree that generally speaking, the other had a poor reputation for the quality of its work and its unusually decentralized organization. Some of the Abwehr's less stellar image and performance was due to an intense rivalry it had with the SS and other organizations. And further considerations for the failings of the Abwehr could have been something to do with the Allied success in deciphering the German Enigma machines, uh, most of you know uh, the code breakers at Bletchley Park. Uh, it is also a crucial element that uh, British signals intelligence was seen to be far superior to that of the Germans, especially once we uh, did break uh, the Enigma code. So we move on to the Frau Solf tea circle or the Solf Creek. So when the Second World War began, uh, Hannah Solf, Johanna Solf, uh, seen here on the left, was 51 and living in an apartment in the diplomatic area of central Berlin. The apartment was owned by, by her neighbor, who lived with his daughter, uh, Imgard. Laggy Solf was back from Shanghai, where she'd been uh, uh, helping Jews escape uh, from Germany. Divorced already and 29, she was seen, said to be slim and well-dressed, imbuing any gathering with an aura of international sophistication. The Gestapo called her in for questioning over helping Shanghai Jewish refugees. At that point, no further action was taken. However, mother and daughter were quietly using their extensive ties to the Wehrmacht, the Defense Military's Intelligence Service, the Abwehr, to help, in order to help Jews leave Germany. Lagi found it both dangerous and tedious, visiting innumerable embassies and consulates in quest of visas. In 1940, Lagi married a conscripted Wehrmacht officer on leaving Berlin. He was returning from Poland, heading to Norway, soon to be invaded. Count Hubert Graf von Balschrem was a, of old German uh, nobility and the seventh son of one of Germany's richest men, coal, uh, coal steel, uh, a coal and steel industrialist. This marriage made a Lagia Countess and one of Germany's richest women. Her husband, a Catholic, had long oppo been opposed to the Nazis 
The newly married couple was soon parted by the war, unfortunately. However, mother and daughter continued their subversive work. At this time, Jewish apartments had to be marked with the Star of David and non-Jews were forbidden for, from visiting. Of course, Laggy would go into such apartments, getting the list from the occupants of what they needed, including vegetables and items still not rations. In her diary, she, she noted, a butcher's wife with a wink would weigh me, weigh me up a large piece of meat than the ration called for. Jews were also occasionally hidden within their apartment, with the janitor saying he knew who was being hidden, but they would never find out from me. Every day involved great effort. Laggy would be avoid giving the mandatory Nazi salute, for example, by ensuring that she always had a bag of shopping or laundry in each hand. The pair frequently met uh, with friends at their apartment to speak freely, vent their disgust and despair, receive information and to take counsel. They also listened to banned foreign radio stations. In times, the gatherings would soon be marked up in uh, Gestapo files as the Solf Circle. Johanna and Laggy were aware of what the Gestapo were doing because close confidence spied in turn on the Gestapo. Hannah sent another couple, uh, sent a couple of uh, Jews down to Baden and they were arrested and tortured. And they said that it was uh, Hannah who told them where to go. But once again, nothing had happened to the Sulfs. As Laggy wrote, no one who has not lived through it can fully understand the feeling of being cornered. That haunted us day and night. We cannot trust anyone except those whom we knew well. We could not use the telephone freely. It might be tapped. We were never sure we were not being watched. As the war went on, we saw ourselves losing out in our struggle against the Nazis. And furthermore, in August 1943, she was warned by the Gestapo. Uh, she was warned that the, the Gestapo watching them closely and they became further more cautious. September the 10th, 1943, the Soft Circle met at a birthday party given by Elizabeth von Thaden, the Protestant headmistress of a famous girls' school. Among the guests were Otto Kiep, a high official from the Foreign Office who was once dismissed from his position as Consul General in New York City for attending a public luncheon in honour of Albert Einstein. The Countess Hannah von Bredau, who is the granddaughter of Otto van Bismarck. Uh, sorry, the, that is... Uh, Elizabeth von Thaden, uh, the uh, headmistress. That's the, uh, the grand of the uh, of Otto van Bismarck. Count von Bernstorff, the nephew of uh, the in the First World War. This is Father Friedrich Exleben, a well-known Jesuit priest. Uh, Nicholas von Harlem, a merchant. Uh, this is a uh, Richard Koisner, uh, uh, legal advisor, and these these are uh, Laggy and Hannah. I do apologise. Elizabeth Van Hayden, uh, the headmistress, arrived with a thirty-year-old man calling himself Robbie. Oh, if I don't click on you, no, there we go. Robbie. His name was in fact Paul Reichsee. He was a doctorate uh, Ber uh, in Berlin, uh, and he'd said that he was back from Switzerland and had a letter of in introduction from the daughter of an influential but long dead Swiss painter, Ma Maria Sagantini. He told the Solf Circle he was keen to take mail out of Switzerland, out to Switzerland, sorry, um, this being an offense of clearly uh, under Nazi rule. He told uh, Hannah, he could deliver messages to her contacts among German emig emigrant circles in Switzerland. However, they refused. We were too careful with messages abroad to entrust them to any but the closest friends. Furthermore, the, the neighbor's daughter discovered that uh, Thaden had met him just 24 hours before. And as Laggy said, that should have run an alarm, rung an alarm bell. A young man in health, not in the army, traveling to Switzerland in the middle of the war. On that afternoon, everyone had obviously forgotten the first rule in fight for survival is never to speak to strangers about politics. 
He was a colourless man with no distinctive features, ideal for a spy. So the South Circle members worried about arrest. Berlin suffered a series of Allied bombing raids. They were bombed out of uh, their apartment uh, and they left for their home 700 uh, kilometers south of Berlin on the austrian Bavaria border. However, on the 12th of January 1944, the Gestapo finally made the move, seizing, seizing 74 people linked to the self Sol Circle. And it uh, took seven Gestapo men to arrest uh, Hannah and Laggy. Hitler had long suspected the other had been infiltrated by anti-Nazi defectors uh, and allied agents and the defection of um, various defections, sorry, after the self circle arrest all but confirmed it. Uh, he also mistakenly believed that uh, uh, various uh, members of his senior circle absconded with the secret codes of the advert and turned them over to the British. This proved to be the last straw for Hitler. Despite the efforts of the advert to shift blame to the SS, or even to the foreign ministry, Hitler had had enough of uh, Vice Admiral Canaris, and he told uh, Himmler twice. He summoned the chief of the advert for a final interview and accused him of allowing the advert to fall to bits. Canaris quietly agreed that it was not surprising as Germany was losing the war. He was fired on the spot, and in uh, February 1944, Hitler signed the decree that abolished the advert. Its functions were taken over by the Reich Main Security Office and the SS Brigadier General. Canaris was given an empty title of Chief of the Office of Commercial and Economic Warfare and finally was arrested in July 1944, following the uh, attempted assassination of Hitler uh, and executed shortly before the end of the war. Following their arrests, Johanna Hanna was uh, held in a windowless tower and interrogated for two days. At this point, she was 56 uh, before being sent north. Two Gestapo agents, man and woman, uh, the female being uh, Heinrich Himmler's niece, took her on a regular passenger train. And one of the guards gave her a ticket and a suitcase and said, in case we get into different cars, don't forget you have to get out with Drogon. She sat for two hours in the crowded train and Laggy found the situation grotesque. She said, I had money, my ID card and my baggage. It was only that uh, I knew what they would do to my mother that I didn't run away there on the spot. <laughs> Once I arrived, they were taken to Ravensbrück, uh, which was Hitler's concentration camp for women. And at its height, it had around 45,000 prisoners. Uh, over six years, 130,000 women were beaten, starved, or worked and uh, or gassed to death. Uh, on arriving at the concentration camp, Laggy wrote, that raw, gloomy evening, I saw for the first time the jury barracks and the column of inmates in their striped uniforms. I could see the large open space of the camp square and hear the shrieking siren and the roll, of, the roll call and camps, camp activities. They were given medical checks to, to see if they were strong enough to be tortured. They weren't. As a result, every day they saw men returning from the interrogation, uh, with Laggy stating that she had a young man in the cell next to hers who had been so br brutally abused that he was afraid he might uh, reveal information in the next interrogation. That night he hung himself. The doctor of the camp would give uh, Hannah, the mother, sleeping drafts and then wake her up for sessions that lasted six to 15 hours. Uh, this is a woman who's getting on towards 60 years old. Threatened her with execution, threatened to arrest her youngest son, told her she'd have to cart rocks and that she'd be put in a dark cell. Finally, they were put at the mercy of a judge, Roland Freisler, judge president of the Volska Reichshof, the People's Court. Unfortunately, he was infamous for wild temper tantrums, screaming fits, and around 2,600 people were killed on his orders. He specified the man at hanging or death by Falbai, the equivalent of the guillotine, whilst others were shot.
uh, Johanna was uh, charged with treason and she would uh, appear uh, before Freisler on the 1st of July 1944 with other members of the Sov Circle. Laggy, however, was not charged but perhaps because she'd not been at most of the circle meetings that the infiltrator had attended. Johanna was accused of instructing the uh, Gestapo spy on how to begin peace negotiations with the Allies, uh, to which she replied, if I'd wanted to do that, I would have found a better messenger. The judge asked her if uh, she thought that the treatment of Jews in inhumane, to which, of course, she said yes. Within three hours, uh, he'd already uh, sentenced all 10 of the... Um, Defendant guilty. Van Thaden, the uh, the school headmistress, uh, was the following day. The last words being, "Put an end, Lord, to all our sufferings." The charges against Hannah were, were withdrawn because the uh, Germans, the Nazi regime, required further investigation of both the mother and the daughter. Uh, a lawyer helping uh, Hannah met with ministry officials and was told the case against the Solfes is absolutely serious and the death sentence will be seriously considered. Unfortunately for them, uh, the assassination attempt on Hitler was performed by Wehrmacht Obst Klaus von Stauffenberg, a good friend of Laggy's husband. Uh, thus, the Gestapo began to work brutally on the Solf circle members looking for links into the plot. Following the trial, they were sent back to the concentration camp. The, tr the, the reprieve meant more uncertainty, more inter interrogations and more misery. Uh, as Laggy wrote, the examination, uh, interrogations lasted all night and stopped only at 7 a.m. when my mother fainted. Lawyer Ru Rudolf Dix had been assigned to their case just now before the first trial, feared the Nazis wanted to hold a bigger trial with more defendants from the self circle. And it was rumored that Himmler was in fact building up a list of political prisoners with mother and daughter included that he could trade with the allies. However, on October 1944, a guard appeared at Laggy's cell and said, get up, it's time for you to leave. She was put into prison holding uh, seven men and they were taken to Merbit Criminal Prison where they each received a typed copy of the 12 page indictment against them. The two women want again to stand trial for a second time with further members of the self circle. This was set for the 3rd of February 1945. It turned out that the US IMA Air Force planned a thousand bomber daylight raid on Berlin for that day. They were locked in the cell and as the bombers arrived, uh, Laggy stated uh, in her memoirs, the huge old prison building with its thick stone walls shook to the foundations. We sat in our cells I donning a bo bottomless pile of military socks when the bombs fell all around and the air was filled with the noise of modern aerial warfare. Amidst the bombing, Freisler, the judge, carried on at his desk. He was expecting a busy day of sending people to their deaths. Heading to see them was the family of uh, an inmate. Uh, the delegation from the, his family were in the court to ask for a stay of ex execution. Among the group, crossing the city was a brother of the inmate, Rolf, a medical doctor serving in the military. As they reached uh, the prison, they made, made for an air, sorry, as, they, <coughs> as the bombers reached Berlin, the judge and an accused man were still in the court. They made for an air raid shelter when uh, the judge, Freisler, realized that uh, he'd left the file on his desk. He turned back as a bomb exploded, exploded close by and he hit. As the bombing stopped, the brother of the accused and his family arrived at the prison and were able to verify that the judge was dead. So ironically, it was the brother of the uh, man who's about to sentence that uh, confirmed his death. Word reached the solves the next day. Fellow prisoners whispered, Freisler is dead. I can hardly believe it. It meant life for us, time gained, and elimination of our most dangerous enemy. He delayed going, on to, going to the air raid Cellar and was killed by a bomb which hit the court building. Many records were burnt in, in the raid, including the Solfs. 
Following this, a fever gripped Laggy. She stated, even the most apathetic developed a wild desire to live. We knew that the war could not last much longer, but there was still a danger of being killed at the end by the SS. Some criminals and lesser politicians were now freed. Female guards stopped coming to camp, fearing liberation might be their deaths. She stated that even the trees in the prison yard start, started turning green. However, the trials later resumed uh, with the source being scheduled for a late April trial. And once again, on the 23rd of April, the door to Laggy's cell was thrown open. The guard said, get ready for a discharge. An official responsible for distribution of ration shoes had been working to get uh, the source out. He'd started out as a lawyer, but had refused to take an oath to Hitler. He'd helped the source circle to get Jews out of Germany. And he came to that day and found the most senior guards who were disorientated and hysterical as the Soviets moved closer to the, to the capital. Many were drunk. He managed to get them to release the solves and they were taken to the prison office <coughs> where uh, friends were waiting. We were all bewildered and not sure what was happening to us, but we found ourselves indeed discharged and walking out of prison. It was a mistake. And Goebbels was alarmed and ordered all efforts made to be found those two women. Fortunately, it was too late and Hitler had, uh, shortly killed himself. Oh, yeah, there we go. Sorry, didn't click on there. So there you can see a couple of photos from the concentration camp and the, uh, Heinrich Müller, who was head of the Gestapo at the time. Uh, and that's the first page of the Gestapo indictment uh, against uh, the Solf and, and the Solf family. And the Solf circle, I do apologise. Uh, so around 100 people have been involved in the Solf Circle. 66 were either murdered or executed. At uh, Nuremberg, major war criminals were tried over a year from November 1945, and Johanna Solf was a prosecution witness against the Nazi's chief prosecutor, Ensch Lautz, who had approved 1,500 prosecutions every month. Laggy's husband, Hubert von Bauström and Spenny spent many years after the war imprisoned on trumped up charges in communist East Germany. Laggy died in Bonn on the 14th of September 1955, just 10 months after her mother Hannah had died as well. A few months after her death, uh, before her death, sorry, Laggy wrote the following. I do not like to think about the past because it has lost its meaning. The world has learned nothing from it. Neither the butchers, the victims, or the onlookers. Our time is like a dance of death whose eerie rhythm few understand. Everyone swirls around in confusion without seeing the abyss. And on the left there, you have uh, Johanna's grave uh, in her hometown uh, where she actually has a road named after her. And uh, that was uh, on the right, uh, Wilhelm and Hannah, uh, shortly after they met. So that concludes my little talk. I'm afraid it was a bit all over the place. I hope you enjoyed it. I can stop sharing this, hopefully. There we go. How do I... Uh... I don't know. So I do, it's probably a bit shorter than expected, but it's been a long time since I've done a presentation, a good 10 years. Thank you very much for that. Can you hear me? Thank you. Yes, yes, I can hear you all. Yeah. So how did your side of the family end up in this country then? They'd been to and from uh, the UK um, during, uh, during the outbreak of the First World War. Um, Wilhelm himself was actually in, uh, in Oxford at the time in London. And uh, he was arrested on charges of... Uh, being a spy while he was in London, so he had to then go back to Germany. Um, uh, and then Laggy actually moved to, to, to the United Kingdom after after the war with, with, with all the family. So, so do you speak German? Not anymore. I haven't spoken it, spoken it for a good 10 years, if not more. So mm. it's it's interesting how how close your family's story comes to a lot of the important people I've heard of in um, 
in Nazi Germany, like uh, Roland Freisler, for, for example. And uh, I didn't know that the, the Solf Circle was that um, uh, interconnected with the Abwehr and um, uh, Canaris. Mm. No, I say, I, they, well, when I first was thinking about a topic, I was thinking more about, talking about Wilhelm Solf, the mm. husband of, uh, of Johanna, Johanna. Uh, and the more I sort of looked into it, the more I realised actually the the wider story was a lot more interesting. Mm. Um, I could have, you know, spoken uh, just as long about his diplomatic career, but realising what I hadn't realised before. And there is a couple of, uh, in the one of, I think it's Auckland University, they do a module or a course on um, uh, South Pacific uh, South Pacific studies, in effect, and one of their modules is is on Wilhelm Solf and his government of uh, of Samoa. Mm. Um, wow! And uh, the the uh, the course course lead actually wrote a, an academic book on him because following the war uh, he was forgotten, in effect, because he was rejected by by uh, obviously German leadership, and then the Allies. Uh, we're not going to be interested in what he'd done. So uh, mm. it's only now that uh, it's it's people that get getting the recognition that really they should have done. Mm. 